Hello, NBC Church family. Coming to you with a church briefing, an update on where things are and how things are moving forward. Let me begin by saying that we are working on an in-person meeting plan. Working on a plan of what it would look like for us to have an in-person meeting again. I have been meeting with church consultants as well as pastors throughout the state, just talking about ideas and ways that we can, one, keep people safe, and to follow the guidelines that we've been given. Let me begin by saying that we need to be respectful of other people's opinions. Not everybody is going to see this the same way you do. Some believe that this pandemic has been blown way out of proportion and we never should have closed the church doors. Others believe that it's reckless and maybe foolish to even open the church doors again yet. And there's a lot of us that are somewhere in between those opinions. So we're trying to navigate that the best we can Seek wisdom from others and counsel from the Lord on how we move forward the best way possible. That being said, let me encourage everyone uh, to secure a mask. We're going to encourage everybody that gathers for our first in-person gathering and gatherings to come uh, to be wearing a personal mask. Let me encourage you to begin gathering one now. If you haven't already, begin doing so. If you are an individual who can sew mask, like the person who sewed this one for me, if you would like to begin making some to be distributed on that Sunday we have in-person gatherings, contact our church office and let us know. We'd love to uh, engage you in that ministry. Let me also encourage you, if you have hand sanitizer that you can use personally, uh, that you bring that with you and use that. That will help the hand sanitizer supply that we have as a church go a little bit farther. As we move forward and have in-person gatherings, things will be different. We will be developing a new normal. Things will not be the same as they were when we stopped meeting. So be patient and recognize that things will be different. Take a little while to process it and do your best to comply with where things are and how they are so that we can continue to meet together. I anticipate that the governor is going to release some guidelines on the 11th of May, next Monday, and we will be able to, once we receive those guidelines, meet again as church staff and deacons to help come up with a finalized plan that we, we will then share with you. Know that we're working on a plan. A plan is in the process, and once it is finalized, you will know. In-person meetings are on the horizon, but different than what we've had before. Let me give you an update on some committee meetings that we had last Sunday night. The first was the Properties Committee. The Properties Committee met and reviewed the hallway renovations progress, how things have gone. The hallways look wonderful. The floors look great. Most of all the painting has been completed. The bathrooms need to be reassembled. We set priorities on some facilities projects that we know need to be done. Uh, the first is that of upgrading a fuse box, electrical fuse box from fuses to um, breakers. And so that we believe that is a, a high priority of something that needs to be done. Also replacing the flooring in the children's hallway above where we just renovated the hallways across from the office. Money has been given to renovate and expand the kitchen that connects to the Family Life Center. And so we discussed first steps to begin that renovation process. Finance Committee determined that there were sufficient funds for the electrical project in upgrading the fuse box to breaker box, but there were not sufficient funds to do the flooring upstairs in the children's wing. So if you would like to donate to that project and others that will be coming, you can give to the church and designate it special projects. The Personnel Committee met, and they approved the continuation of the Family Minister Intern. Uh, Ethan Hines has been serving in that role, and he will finish his term and that position at the end of May. They determined that that was a worthwhile position and would like to see someone continue in that role starting in June. And an individual has been approached and is praying about serving in that role. They also approved the addition of an assistant position, an assistant to the family minister, that's Mr. Ricky, and this person would assist more in the, in the area of kids ministry while the intern focusing a little bit more in the student or the teen ministry. 
Ethan Hines was that person who was selected based on how well things went in the intern position that he would continue to serve more in an assistant role uh, to Mr. Ricky moving forward starting in June. The personnel committee also discussed that we have not had to lay off or decrease the pay of any of our church staff during this pandemic. The finance committee met and discussed the giving. We are a few hundred dollars below our projected needs for giving. So thank you for your giving. It's been uh, great to see how you've continued to give online, mailing your gifts in to the office or dropping them by. Thank you for doing that. I want to encourage you to continue to do that. But our update is we're a few hundred dollars each week below our budgeted needs. So just want you to be aware of that. Finance Committee also would discuss that we applied for and received the PPP loan, the Payroll Protection Program loan. It was, we received $26,492. These funds are to be used for payroll and utilities in a two month time frame. This was given by the federal government in order that individuals in small businesses would not be laid off and more burden would be applied to the unemployment program. So we have not had to lay anybody off and these funds will help do that. When we use these funds for payroll to pay our staff and for utilities, it is 100% forgivable and will not have to be paid back at all. And so we've received those funds, they will be used up to pay our staff and at least a month and a half utilities. We reviewed the church budget and expenses and determined that some funds could be allocated toward facilities in order that the electrical project could be completed. Those are the three committees that met and they are meeting and continuing on in activities in order that our church continues to move forward in the absence of business meetings and all of these reports and complete details will be given when we're able to meet in person for a formal business meeting. Tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer, so let me encourage you, challenge you to spend some time praying for our nation. I've been asked to involve, be involved in a National Day of Prayer service tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Physical Court Building, but it will be uh, only a limited group of people will be gathered there. We will be broadcasting that over the radio as well as on some live feeds. It will be on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube channel, so you can Log in there at 10 a.m. and pray along with us for our nation. It is a tremendous time uh, for us to call upon the Lord to do a great work in the midst of these very challenging days. We always need Him, and we need Him now. And the great thing is, a lot more people are aware of how much we need the Lord. Let me encourage you to go onto our church website, if you haven't already, and fill out the church survey. Go to MumfordvilleBaptist.org, and you'll find the surveys at the beginning of the page. Please fill that out and click submit. That's helping us in our preparation of the in-person meeting plan that we are putting together. Want to hear from you and know what your expectations are and what you anticipate you will be doing. One final thing, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to you ladies who are watching. If you would like some ideas on how to celebrate Mother's Day at home, since we're not able to do that in person at church, we have provided a document on our church website. You can go just below the church survey and you'll find there's some tabs that are scrolling there. One says Mother's Day at Home. You can click on that tab and you will find a PDF that gives you, I think, about four pages of ideas of ways that you can be creative in celebrating uh, the mother that God has blessed you with and to honor and worship Him for her. That is our church briefing at this point. Thank you for watching this. More updates will be coming as we finalize the plan for in-person gatherings. Hope you have a great day. God bless.